Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 45. We we'll started off last time. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Elizabeth talking to Mary. Important you get that. Because Mary said, and Mary said, this is where we left off last time. Once you get this again, I want you to understand that there are liars out there. There are people who will pervert the word of God and they don't have to subtract or add. They can put a footnote. Because a footnote in a Roman Catholic Bible says Elizabeth is speaking. And how you can say that when the Bible says, and Mary said. How does a million people, if not more, attend a church and say that Elizabeth said where it said Mary said? Because they don't want you to open the Bible. Because any smart person who goes to an English class who can say, and Mary said in a footnote, this is Elizabeth speaking, well, I am man. So the church knows they're wrong and covers it up by keeping the word of God closed to you. Because that's just absolutely foolish. My soul, Mary speaking, my, Mary, soul, does magnify the Lord. Mary is not magnifying herself as the Roman Catholic Church does. She's magn magnifying the Lord. When you attend this one church, you would think that Mary's sitting right there with God. She's already taken the position of Jesus if you see her standing on the serpent's head. That is Jesus, Genesis 3.15. Mary to that church, you know, she's the mother of God, the mother of Jesus. And when Jesus is so mean and cruel, we have to nail him to the cross so mom can take over. And my spirit, Mary's spirit, Mary's soul, Mary's spirit, has rejoiced in God, my, what's she saying there? I thought Mary was sinless. I thought she was magnificent. Uh, magnificent. That's not Elizabeth. We're told in verse 46. Her soul, her eternal part of her, that's going to live forever and in probably well in heaven, lifts up the Lord in magnification. The spirit that God has given her, Genesis chapter 2, where God breathed into man he became a living soul her breath her being rejoices in God my Savior who is the Savior of mankind for there is no other name given, given among men whereby you must be saved what is that name? Yeah, how you doing? Hi, we're Jehovah Witnesses here. We want you to take our magazine. Uh, do you believe that Jesus is God? No, we don't believe. He, he was just, you know, the son of God. And, but, and then you, you're calling Mary his mother a liar.
The Savior is in her womb. The baby in the womb saying, Yeah, Mom, tell him. And a girl. That's Acts twenty twenty eight. It said that God shed his blood. Well, wait a minute. How could God shed his blood on Calvary? God had to be Jesus and Jesus had to be God. And here Mary's saying, I'm a sinner, I need a savior, and it's God. Well, let's go back for a minute. Uh let's see. Where is it? Verse 31. Luke 1 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. All right, it's already in the womb. She's already pregnant. And bring forth a son. She don't need a, 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 a ultrasound. She knows the sex of the child. And shall call his name Jesus. The child's already named. That's in her womb right now when she's talking to Elizabeth. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom shall there be no end. Well let's go to Matthew. I we'll have to find this from Matthew, Matthew, first couple chapters. Let's see about this child that's in her womb that she said save her. I don't have this one written down. Um, right here, Matthew 1. Matthew 1, tw 1 20. For while he thought on these things, this is Joseph. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife. We know who we're talking to. For that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost. All right? This is exactly what we've been studying in Luke chapter 1. I'm writing this down in here because I want this to be known. Okay? Now watch. She shall bring forth a son. That is the son that's in her womb right now. Talking to Elizabeth. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. That's exactly what it said in Luke. He shall save his people from their sins. From back to Luke 1. So Mary says in verse 47, And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The message that was brought to her husband. I'm sorry, but if you proclaim Mary more, I mean, listen, Mary's a wonderful woman. That God has chosen her. God wouldn't just chose any woman. God did not cast lots upon the women in, in Israel to choose. You know, we don't lift up Mary enough, but the Roman Catholic Church lifts her too high. But to say that Mary was sinless, you are making her own words a lie. Now imagine... The great white throne judgment. Every single pope and my jury to priest. I don't think any pope is saved. Well, that's between them and God. I believe probably some priests are saved in the Roman Catholic Church. I'll give them that credit. But can you imagine the popes and the priests who are lost at the great white throne judgment stand up there and the count is settled. And what did you believe about Mary? Oh, she was sinless. Mary, you want to come over here again? Yes, Lord? Would you account what you said 
Okay, I have rejoiced in God my Savior. You know how many times Mary's going to have to say that? Now, I'm one of the ones, and I, mean, I could be wrong. And if, if otherwise it's said, I don't believe they're wrong. But I'm one of the ones that believe that God will give you an account to speak at the great white throne judgment. He let Job run his mouth. And when it came time for Job to speak, Job was put to silence. And if man is allowed to give God words on how he feels his rights, you imagine how many times Mary's going to have to quote Luke 147? And we're going to quote her later, too. Because look what she says over here in John chapter 4, I believe. I think it's John chapter 4. Can you imagine this one. In John chapter 4. Uh, no. John chapter 2. Yeah, John chapter 2. Mary speaking. Verse 5. His mother, okay, Wh whose mother? It's Mary. Now match with, with, with chapter 1 of Luke, verse 47. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Now you find me, in the King James 6011 Bible where Jesus said, you pray to my mother. Find it. Book, chapter, and verse in the authorized King James 1611 Bible. Because Mary just told you whatever Jesus said. Jesus said, believe on my words. Believe on the one that sent me, the Father. Luke chapter 1. That same one that she said, what he says to do, in Luke chapter 1, he, she says, my Savior. She's under Jesus. Mary is not the Savior. God is. Mary is not God. Proclaimed by Mary, not Elizabeth. Mary is speaking. i got to get that because your Bible says it's not Mary. What kind of witness would there be? If they lied. It'd be a false witness. And you go through the Bible and see what the Bible says about false witnesses. When you proclaim Mary who she is not, you are a false witness. And that's a violation of one of the Ten Commandments. Since you go by works and the commandments. You see why they want the Bible shut? Can you imagine a Catholic? They are under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They are seeking God some way, somehow, and they just don't know. Can you imagine a, a Roman Catholic reading through here? And whence it is to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. And lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, and the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Hey, the baby leaped. Wow. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be perform, performance of those things which were told of her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord. Good Mary, I say it. And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Wait a minute. Mary's my Savior. But she says, 
God is my Savior. That don't make sense. And Lord forbid she goes running to her priest who doesn't know how to dress. Because he'll give him some traditional backlash, serpent venom kind of answer. But when she would turn to the Holy Spirit and say, turn to God and say, and turn to Jesus and say, God? Why does Mary say, my Savior? I don't understand. What do you think God would do with that heart? You know why it was called the Dark Ages? Because the Bible was closed by a certain church. It was not to be open. It was a time of magic and superstitions. Time of the great plague. The plague where you have a patient in bed, he'd die, and a doctor right next to him would probably die. Death was everywhere. And this is the same church who say, oh, we got, uh, we got as, as a symbol of our church, we got the head of John the Baptist here. The guy will go traveling far off another country in, in, in Europe, and he go in this church, he goes, uh, we, in this church we have, you know, the breast milk of Mary. In this church we have the feather of Gabriel. In this church we have the, the head of John the Baptist. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was at a church over there, they said they have the, the head of John the Baptist. Well, they have the adult head of John the Baptist. We've got the infant head of John the Baptist. Oh, okay. And that was a superstition. And that's supervision. Superstition. Superstition. I can't even say the word. She is not the savior. I grew up in this mess. My great grandparents, Polish, Polish Catholic, come to this country, came to a church I can bring you to in New London, Connecticut, the, the Polish church, Catholic church. My grandfather would take me to, to Mary's church. Now that's where I grew up as a little boy. Then when I moved, I went to Joseph's church. I don't think I've ever seen a Jesus church of, of the Catholic. Isn't that funny? And I was taught that Jesus is nailed to the cross, and I prayed to Mary with, who had a heart operation that they didn't close up. Listen, if a doctor opens up your chest and reveals your heart and doesn't close it up, you're going to get, she's going to get diseases. She's going to die. It's going to get irritated. It's going to get infected. So what do you teach? If thou shalt bleed with thy heart... You believe in Mary's heart. I want to get this down. You need to know that there's a false religion and people are fooled and blinded. And the, on the other hand, you've got churches who knock Mary. It's not Mary's fault. You go back to the previous videos and audios of Luke, of chapter 1. You'll find out that Mary was a remarkable woman over a priest that was in the holy place.
And she says, my Savior, which means she's saying, I need a Savior. Savior is a definition. One who saves from any form or degree of evil. In its highest sense, the word indicates the relation sustained by our Lord to his redeemed ones. He is their Savior. Now, I wonder what the Roman Catholic Church Encyclopedia and Dictionary would say. If it would match Webster's 1828. Because imagine a dictionary, Webster's Dictionary. Imagine if this dictionary was to be put in the public school. It said, and I quote, In its highest sense, the word indicates the re relation, not religion, sustained by our Lord to his redeemed ones. He is their Savior. The great message of the gospel is about salvation and the Savior. Look what Mary said. God, my Savior. It is the gospel of salvation. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ secures to the sinner a personal interest in the work of redemption. It said in the Lord Jesus Christ, Webster did not say Mary. Mary did not say Mary. Webster says Jesus Christ. Mary said God. Didn't we read last time about Luke that Elizabeth kicked, kicked the Jehovah Witness butts? Mary just kicked the Catholics butts. Mary just kicked the Jehovah Witness butts. Mary said that her son is the Savior and it's God. Acts 16, 30 and 31. What must I do to be saved? What's the answer? What is the answer by Paul? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, matches 1828 Webster's Dictionary, and thou shall be saved. Match 47 with, with Acts 16.31. And you read that to a Jehovah Witness. And you dare that Jehovah Witness to call Mary the mother of God, a uh, mother of Jesus. Excuse me, I'm, not, I'm sorry I said that. Repent of that. She's the mother of Jesus, not God. I'm sorry for saying that. My spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. And have that Jehovah Witness tell you that Mary is a liar. Or I wonder what their Bible would say. But see, that's not careful if Elizabeth or Mary said this. God, my Savior. See that capital S? I'm not a gambling man. I don't bet. Well, I'm willing to assume. You know what, well, you know what sometimes I assume can do for you. That the New World Translation, and they got a new one on the market now. I would assume they changed that verse. I would assume somehow, some way. I could be wrong. I don't go dilly dallying the false Bibles no more. But that verse right there makes Jesus Christ God and God Jesus Christ. I would assume they messed with that verse. Not finished. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ secures to the sinner a personal interest in the work of redemption. Salvation is redemption made effectual to the individual by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. Hold on. How much does Mary know? Come back to verse 35. Luke 1.35. And the angel answered on 
and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power to hire shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. What did Mary say? Verse 38. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Mary knew exactly what she was saying. Because she believed. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you're not even six verses, seven verses, maybe eight. The wonderful gospel of Mary is that God is the Savior, and the Savior is God, and it's in her womb, and she can't do nothing to save you. Mary is not the Savior. God is. It will take a lot of prayer to deal with your Roman Catholic friends, your Catholic family, your Catholic co-workers. And you don't need to run over to, was it Matthew 28? I forget where it is. Call no man your father. No, you, don't need to, you don't need to go over there with that big sword. Yes, it does say call no man your father. But walk up to your Catholic friend, your family, and say, excuse me. You do believe that Mary gave birth to Jesus, yes. Mary was Jesus' mother. Yes, Mary was a wonderful woman, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. If Mary told you something, would you believe it? And you know any Catholic. Yeah. I mean, Mary today, to them, she's making toast and her son shows up in it. Mary's out cutting trees and his face shows up in the limb. And you walk up to your Catholic friend, and listen, Mary is not to be spoken wrong of. And you get to, listen, they're going to agree with you. Mary is a wonderful woman. And if you can snag them in the thing and say, hey, listen, would you believe what Mary told you? Yes. Run over to John chapter 2 and read what we read. Then run her over to Luke chapter 1 and have them say, Mary said. Stress that. Say it 5,000 times to him. Didn't Jesus say, verily, verily? If it's something important, verily, verily? Is it something important that shows up in twi twice in the Gospels? Is, is important shows up three times in the Gospels? If it's important, it shows up four times in the Gospel? The fact that Paul tells us his testimony is recorded three times in the Gospel? Once fight happened in, in Acts chapter 9, and once before a king, and once before another king, and then he tells who he was in, in one of the, the epistles to the church, that if it's repeated, it's something important. And show them the Bible, it says, and Mary said. What's that say? It says, and Mary said. Yeah, isn't that great that Mary said? Mary said that. Would you believe what Mary said? Yeah. Well, look, Mary said. Would you really believe what Mary said? Yeah, I believe what Mary said. Didn't Jesus do that to Peter? Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, yeah, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Peter was great, Lord, and she keeps saying, I love you. Do you really believe what Mary would tell you? Yes, I believe. Mary said, read that. Mary said, Mary said, get them to know what Mary said. Because if they go run home to their Bible, their Catholic Bible, the footnote's going to say Elizabeth said it. And they run to their, their Catholic Bible, it's going to say, well, wait a minute. No, it says Mary said. You touch the Holy Spirit in their heart to say, that's what the Bible says, not what tradition says. 
They can't say Mary said and it says Elizabeth said. That's impossible. And then you work, my soul does magnify the Lord. That's a, that's a side shot. Don't worry about the church magnifies Mary. Don't go into that one yet. Get to the next verse. And my soul has rejoiced in God my Savior. And say, why would Mary say my Savior, which is God, if she was sinless? And don't get the baseball bat out and don't get the big huge sword out. Drop it right there. Let the Holy Spirit work on your family and your friends who are Catholics. God, my Savior. Wait a minute. I'm praying to her for something. Now, if truly, if God is drawing that person to him by the Holy Spirit, do you not believe if you were nicely, imagine me saying the word nicely, I mean, you would drop dead if it me being nice. You don't think the Holy Spirit would use that to work on your family and your friends? Now, if they take that verse and they jump and they and they fight and they and they quiver and they uh, argument and all that, they probably won't get saved. They're lost in the religion. Some are lost. And will not be saved. But if you're dealing with somebody that, that God can work with, you take a verse like that, and that's a million dollar verse to them. If you can get them to realize that Mary's not the Savior, and Mary said she needed a Savior, if that heart will turn to Jesus Christ as their Savior, that verse will do. And then if you spark interest, then run over to Matthew 23. Hey, can I show you something else? You, you know, you saw that? Yeah. Can I show you something else in the Bible? Yeah. What? And then you got them interested in the Bible. It says over here, call no man your father upon the earth. Now don't go, you know, don't you call the priest? No, say, call no man your father upon the earth. What are you trying to say? What do you call your priest? Yeah. Wait a minute. Mary need a savior. Mary's not the savior. Now, now you call into question, here's a guy I call father, and the Bible says, and you can get that far. Listen, this is not going to be one afternoon now. If you can get that far with them, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. If you can get that far, it's going to take time and it's going to take prayer. And you don't need to be rude and you don't need to be cruel. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God. You believe there's one God? Oh yeah, I believe there's one God. And one mediator between God and man. Do you believe that there's one person that stands be between God and man? Oh, yeah. The man Christ Jesus. That's not going to get them thinking. And go back to, to Luke chapter 1 and read that passage in verse 47. Again to him. And Mary said... If the Holy Spirit's drawing that person to God, the Romans Road won't work. Why not out of Mary? What about out of the mouth of Mary herself? And if they reject it this far, they won't be saved. I doubt they will be saved because they rejected the counsel of God. They rejected the counsel of their God, Mary.
Mary's preaching the gospel. Luke chapter 1. Mary says, My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Now go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Before Paul even writes this, Mary's saved. Now she may not be saved the way the church is saved today. She has salvation. She will be in heaven. But she was also around after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, Romans 9, I want to get Romans 10, 9. Watch this. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Is that what Mary's doing right now? Is she not confessing Jesus and God? And thou shalt believe in thy heart that God is raised on the dead. Now, she can't believe he's raised on the dead. He hasn't even been born yet. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Does she believe in the righteousness? Yeah. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. What is she saying with her mouth? In my belly or in my womb is God the Savior, Elizabeth. And in my belly is the forerunner of your, of our God and Savior, of our God. I don't want to put a wet cloth, but we're done. I don't want to put a wet cloth on this, but. And there's Zacharias over there in a the corner and can't say a word. Because of what? Unbelief. You know? That's only one verse we've done tonight. And that one verse violates the whole religious system. See, if you close the Bible, you can believe anything you want. If you come up with a perverted Bible, you can believe anything you want. If you come up with your own word of religion, a magazine or another book or whatever you have, a newspaper, whatever, you can believe anything. Well, if you've got the King James 1611 Bible and you open and read it, there's only one belief. There's only one way. There's only one truth. There's only one light. And Mary told you who it was. Nine months before the Savior was born. The Savior that she's going to have to change his diaper. The Savior that she's going to have to fight with her other children because Jesus is the perfect one and all the kids are going to be mad because you know, why can't you be like Jesus? Long before she watches her son hang on the cross. And she never gives up on him. Let Mary do the talking to your Catholic friend. Be sincere and be prayerful.